Hey folks, here we go. Uh, this is my second try at this video. Um, I mistakenly on the first try uh, forgot that the headphones were plugged in and didn't really use the audio to match this up. So yeah, it's been a great start so far already this morning for us. So uh, a couple dates to be aware of next Wednesday, uh, you're going to see that we're going to do uh, open note quiz um, on section 9-1. I'll release topics likely on Friday, maybe Monday of next week. Okay. Um, Monday and Tuesday of next week, what we're going to do is we are going to go through and do Brian on a beam lab on that Monday, Tuesday. This is supposed to be Thursday. Excuse me. And Friday. Okay. Um, of next week, we'll do torque and cantilevers. Um, and then your test is a week from today or a week from tomorrow, depending on your hour and stuff like that. Okay. Without further ado, here we go. All right, angular terms and angular velocity. So when we look at um, tangential speed, now, um, something to be aware of, okay, for those of us who are new or who may not remember, um, white font means, write it down, yellow font, don't worry about it, sit there, think about it, just look at it, okay? So um, if we talk about planetary motion or orbital speed of planets, um, what we are, in fact, talking about is this concept of tangential speed. So if you think about it, um, and uh, we look at, you know, or the Earth as an orbit right around the sun, all right? A weird fact that happens is, is that if our sun were to blink out of existence, the Earth would continue to rotate for about seven minutes, I think, is the number, okay? So as it, start, as it continues to rotate, as that sun blinks away, it's going to continue to rotate, and then all of a sudden, it's just going to take off. Okay, um, for us, that's one way to explain tangential speed. Another way is off a merry-go-round, right? What I mean by that is, is that if you look at how a merry-go-round works, if you ever try to jump off one as a kid, then you've experienced tangential speed, all right? You could also think of it as, you know, off of that swing set that we were talking about last chapter, and you jump off. Now, if there was no gravity, that'd be absolutely perfect because you would see that concept of tangential speed, all right? Your tangential speed would be how fast you would be traveling if you let go and jumped off, similar to this, right? So what you see is, is that we've got a rotation going on here, right? The blue is the radius of that rotation, all right? The red means if we let go at that instant, what happens is we're going to take off and go, all right? So um, when we look at this, we may, we likely have experienced this. Right, depending on how crazy we were about merry-go-rounds and how much we got them going really, really fast, which is usually a, an elementary school thing that becomes kind of fun for a bit and then ouch later on, right? So as we look at it, the red arrow for us shows us our tangential speed, all right? Now, up until this point, we haven't talked a lot about kind of, you know, angular movement or anything like that, but this chapter we start to kind of change that concept and really start to look at you know, multiple directions for us, all right? So if we want to produce that merry-go-round to have a larger tangential speed on the outside, all right, the two things that we would have to do is either spin the merry-go-round faster, so get that thing spinning at a higher rate of speed, and then we could let go, right? Or we make the merry-go-round bigger, all right? The further away from the center we get, the faster really that that exit speed becomes, all right? Um, there was an old movie out there, um, from the early 2000s, I think, called Wanted by Angelina Jolie. Or, uh, she was one of the main stars in it. And basically, it was a movie about um, these assassins who had the ability to take a bullet, and as they swung their arm and fired it, they could curve bullets around and make bullets curve around objects. Mythbusters disproved it. Um, not only that, but it was a concept related to tangential speed. It was a great movie concept because they were able to show CGI of these bullets diving and ducking and moving and stuff like that at really, really crazy angles. Um, but in the end, it was BS. <laughs> All right, so tangential speed, uh, VT equals R, I believe that's omega. Um, so for us, the tangential speed, uh, R is our radius in meters. Notice it's radius, not diameter. Okay, so that's from the center out. All right, and then this omega here, is how fast it spins. That's radians per second. I think that's what it is. I got to look it up. I don't, I have forgotten. Anyway, um, and that's going to be radians per second. I know what you're saying right now. 
Mousley, you said radians were fake. You said that those didn't matter to us, that we were never going to use them. I know. I knew that a little bit in the back of my mind that this was this day was coming and then that there was going to be hell to pay for me just tossing as much shade as I did at this stuff. It's it's here. It's fully on here. Okay? So, try this one out. Um, if the angular velocity of a turning bicycle wheel is 42 radians per second, all right, that means it travels 42 radians every second. Pretty quick, right? Um, and the wheel diameter is 68 centimeters. What is the tangent of velocity? So think of your... Um, you're riding down a road, you're riding down a, a uh, sidewalk, and all of a sudden you encounter some mud, right? And what happens is that your bicycle, you can figure out, is going that fast. I Meaning it's rotated, the wheels are rotating that fast. You know the radius of, or the diameter of the cycle wheel, so you're able to calculate how fast that chunk of mud is going to fly backwards. And maybe onto your shirt or something like that if it's cutting that fast enough, right? So if the angular velocity of a turning bicycle wheel is 42 radians per second, here's what we do. We know those two things, right? Our angular velocity is 42 radians per second. The radius of this is 34 centimeters. Remember, slide two to the left to make 0 0.34 meters, all right? From that 68 centimeter diameter, we multiply those two together. That chunk of mud or that piece of rock or whatever you hit um, is gonna be going at a tangential velocity of 14.3 meters per second. Multiply it by about two and a half, two and a quarter, and you see it should be going about 30 miles per hour backwards. Okay, so is that a high rate of speed? Absolutely. We're spinning that wheel really fast. Okay, so some terms. And again, remember, yellow font, just look at, listen, learn. Okay, S is our arc length. It's a distance measured around the circumference of a circle. Now, my least favorite met well. My least favorite math class was the calculus strain that I got to go on where I averaged C's in college. That was awesome, except not at all, right? But my least favorite high school class was geometry. I didn't understand how you had to, you know, follow the theorems and the proofs. Anyway, sorry, digress. Anyway, let's go on. Uh, so S is our arc length. It's a distance measured along the circumference of the circle. R is the radius, which we know, all right? Theta is our angle. We're going to measure angles in thetas or in radians. I can't tell you how much I don't like radians, okay? I, I am not a fan of radians. I like degrees because I can find it on my phone. I know what a 45 degree angle is. I don't really know what, you know, half or three quarters of a radian is, okay? On the regular, at least. So, okay? So, when we see our surface length is equal to our radius, kind of similar to here, that's when theta equals one radian, okay? So when this S is the same as this radius, so if they're both one meter, then our theta is going to be one radian. Okay? So a couple concepts for you just to look at. Delta theta, that's our angular displacement. How many radians something rotates? All right? Angular speed, how far something rotates in a certain amount of time, radians per second. In other words, how fast it rotates. Angular acceleration, how much something's angular speed changes per unit of time. So if you were to go into a roundabout, we could figure out how fast you're going in angular speed. We could, right? Even though that 20 mile per hour speed limit is in there, we could say, hey, you know how fast you're going? You're going X number of radians per second. Huh. Huh. No, no, I don't want to do that, right? And if all of a sudden... You know, you get into that roundabout and you're like, I got to get the heck out of here because there's crazy people coming towards me and they're going to hit me if I don't speed up or slow down. Well, that's angular acceleration as well, right? Now, again, we haven't talked a lot about these. The reason we haven't talked a lot about these is because we haven't talked multi-direction, right? Yes, I know. Ball and bat problem, right, is what you're saying. Well, the ball this way, bat's going this way. That's multi-direction. Correct. Hey, what about head-on collisions? Type 4, last chapter. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's still on the same coordinate plane, though, right? For us now, what we're doing is we're talking X direction, Y direction, a little bit, okay? So when you start to see these, what you start to see is all of these are very similar to stuff we've already talked about, right? Angular displacement versus linear displacement, same thing. Speeds, very similar. Acceleration, similar, okay? So don't get too worked up over it. If something rotates exactly one time, what is this angular displacement? It should be 2 pi radians, right? 
One complete circle is 2 pi. Apparently they tell me. Okay? Something rotates exactly half, 180 degrees. Pi radians. Okay? So that's just going to be 1 pi. If something rotates 10 times, well, it's going to be 10 times that 2 pi for each one. That's going to be 20 pi radians. Okay? This is all really well and good. This is all really nice because we can talk about how many times it rotates, but this is the terminology we actually will start to use. If something makes exactly one revolution, revolution is one rotation. For us, revolution becomes a huge term because it's how we describe rotation in the world of physics. Its angular displacement for one revolution should be 2 pi radians. Okay? Check this out. Helicopters, we can talk about their blades spinning at a certain rate. Okay? If you look at the right camera here, if you look at the little video down at the bottom there, you see that it appears like this thing is just on a string being lifted up. Right? This is not CGI. This is actually legit video um, that I found on there. Okay? What ends up happening here is, is that the blade's rotation is going to happen at the same rate of speed as the camera's shutter speed, meaning that the camera is going to take pictures at 24 frames a second, 40, 60 frames a second. What ends up happening is, is that that blade is spinning at the exact same rate. So if it's 24 frames a second, this blade is rotating 24 times a second. So each time that clicks a new frame, that blade is in the exact same spot. All right, you can check out hummingbirds doing the exact same thing. You see their wings just stuck here and they up and down and fly. Okay, anyway, so a certain helicopter's blade rotates in an angular speed of 320 revolutions per minute. That's the number that we start to see is revolutions per minute. We call it RPMs. If you look on your vehicle, what you'll see is they have a tachometer, it's called. All right, usually it is on the side. All right, if you're sitting with your cruise on, it's usually at about 2,000, 3,000, two or three is the little angle. If you really jam that accelerator down and get it into the red, ooh, you're going quick out, right? That's going to be 9,000 or 10,000 RPMs, all right? I challenge you to look at that and see if you can see yours in your car. I know exactly where mine is, all right, because I like looking at it when I go too fast. Anyway, uh, what is the angular speed in radians per second? Now, you're looking at this thing and saying, are you serious? I hated stoichiometry and chemistry. We're going to use it for a hot second, okay? So what we see is, in order to get rid of revolutions, revolutions is down there, right? Then we can go to radians. Notice the 2 pi. 2 pi is a big number for us. One revolution is 2 pi radians, all right? Because we got minutes here, in order to get rid of minutes, that's going to go on top, and then we get to our seconds. So what we end up with is radians per second. Now, the numbers to be aware of, you're going to multiply your revolutions by 2 pi, and then divide it by 60, all right? So when we see this, there's two different ways we can do this. We can either use pi as just pi and say, okay, that's 320 times 2, which is 640. 640 divided by 60 is 10.6, repeating. Or you can go ahead and take pi as 3.14, and then you get this actual numeric value. Which one is better? For me, both are the same. I'll have both answers. But I like this one better because I don't want to I don't want to see pi as much as I can. Yeah. I like being able to say, okay, that's the number that's wrong. Okay? All right, so try this one out. <clears throat> so pause it for a second and uh, see if you can rip through this and uh, run through it. So we find that the go around has a top rotational speed of 20 RPMs. Uh, we find that uh, two super awesome girls named Jenny and Jenny are hanging on the very outside of a 24 meter diameter merry go round. Holy cow, that thing's moving and it's huge. 24 meters, remember that's about, what, three and a third feet in a meter. So this thing is somewhere in the neighborhood of, oh my God, is that 100 foot-ish, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, that's craziness. Anyway, um, they uh, get up the courage and just let go. So they see, want to see how fast their tangent to velocity is, okay? So we have to see how fast they are moving, okay? So we take our 20 revolutions per minute, and what we end up doing is we turn that into from RPMs to radians per second. So we multiply it by 2 pi divided by 60. That becomes 2 thirds pi radians per second. Right? Our radius here, we can't use the 24 diameter. We just need the middle out. So we just need the radius of 12. So we end up taking 12 times 2 thirds pi radians per second. And we find our tangential velocity is going to be 25.1 meters per second. Yeah, so these, th these gals are crazy. They're moving about 60 miles per hour. 
55, 60 miles an hour. Okay. Um, that's really it for the day for you. Um, I'll get you homework and stuff tomorrow. Um, today, just get used to new classes and all that good stuff and all the shuffling around and everything there. All right. We will uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.